Greetings everyone. This is Saloni Romer, Assistant Professor, IIMT College of Law, Greater Noida. And I'm about to begin an online, online lecture on schools of jurisprudence. As a student of law, we all have read about the jurisprudence as the science of law, as the uh, basis of law in every nation. So coming first to the introduction, jurisprudence is the study of philosophy of law. Various jurisprudence thinkers, meaning jurists, have tried to explain it in a general form for the more profound understanding of the law making process. Modern day uh, jurisprudence that we see in this era in the 21st century was started in the 18th century and was centered on the primary standards of national law, civil law, and the law of nations. If we come to the general definition of jurisprudence, jurisprudence is the hypothesis and investigation of law. It considers the cause and idea of law. Law has an unpredictable idea. Law is such a vast topic that you just cannot limit its scope. So its comprehension differs from individual to individual. Everybody has an alternate uh, perception of the law. Now, in consonance to it, we will discuss the four major schools of jurisprudence, that is number one, analytical school, historical school, philosophical school, and the last, sociological school. Coming to the first, analytical school, analytical school deals with the law as it is. The speciality of this law is that this, uh, this school connected law with the science. It is the first school that treated law as a science. Analytical school is otherwise called the Austinian school of law because the main propound, propounder of the school was Austin. It is likewise called an imperative school because it considers law as the direction of the sovereign. Law, according to this school, law is something that is directed by the supreme authority that is given by the superior beings to the inferior beings. Truth to be told, it was Austin who propounded the theory of positive law, which was further led by Bentham. The main propounders of this uh, analytical school was number one, Bentham. The era was 1748 to 1832. Bentham can be said to be the author of the analytical school. In one of his books, he dismissed the principles of natural law and expounded the rule of utility with logical accuracy. The speciality of the school, as I said earlier, that they equated it with science and not with the natural law. So he isolated jurisprudence into explanatory and sensorial uh, branches. The previous arrangements with the law, all things considered by the last arrangements with the law as it should be. So it distinguished between what law is and what law should be. The second propounder was Austin. Austin was the most famous propounder of the school and he gave the primary and precise and extensive treatment on the subject which expounded the analytical positivist methodology. And because of this work, Austin is known as the father of the analytical school. He constrained the extent of jurisprudence and endorsed its limit because, the, because he equated it with science. So he just cannot uh, limit exceed the limit of the law. So he described four main features that were number one, command, sanction, duty, and sovereignty. The third propounder was Kelsen. Kelsen theory of law, which later came to be known as the pure theory of law, suggests that law must be free from all the social sciences like brain research, human science, and social history. His point was to develop up an investigation of law which will be pure as in it and will carefully shun all the powerful moral, mental, and sociological school. Meaning, he wanted to isolate law. He does not want to equate it with other social sciences subjects such as history, political science, sociology, and other subjects as well. Coming to the second school, which holds the equal importance as compared to analytical school was historical school of jurisprudence. Historical school of jurisprudence trusts that law is the result of long historical advancement of the general public. The, the meaning uh, that this school interpreted it, that the law is something that has developed over a period of time and it includes the social customs, ethical standards, monetary requirements and relations of the general population. 
the historical school focuses on the development of law from the crude legal organizations of the antiquated uh, networks seveny henry main and elmond burke are the eminent legal jurists of the school so coming to number 1 that is seveny seveny is the most famous founder of the school seveny is views viewed as the originator of the school he says that law develops with the development of nations increments with it and passes with the disintegration of the country meaning the law develops with the nation and the law is slowed down with the disintegration of the nations along with these lines the law is a national character of the consonants of individuals the in this process of integration and disintegration main describes four steps number one the first step is that the rulers are believed to be the acting under the divine inspiration he considered natural law which was not considered by the analytical analytical school and the laws are made on the commands of the rulers for example themistocles of ancient greek the judgment of the king was considered to be the judgment of god and some divine body king was merely an executor of judgments of god and not the law maker if we consider the indian society the similar happened ashoka believed that all the judgments are given by some supreme authority and he is just following it this coming to the second stage then the commands of king converted into customary law the custom prevails in the ruler or majority class custom seem to have succeeded to the right and authorities of the king third stage the knowledge and administration of customs goes into the hands of minority due to the weakening of the law making power of the original law makers like priests the knowledge of customs goes into the hands of a minority class or ordinary class and the ruler is superseded by a minority who obtain control over the law the last stage is the law is codified and promulgated if we see the stages number 1 the king promulgate promulgates a law which he believes that is given by some supreme authority then the king converts it into a customary law being a custom it comes into the hands of the priest and then it is codified and promulgated coming to the third school of jurisprudence that differs from the previous two schools is philosophical school of jurisprudence the philosophical school of jurisprudence or we would rather say moral school concerns itself with the connection of law to specific thoughts which laws intended to accomplish it tries to explore the reasons for the particular law has been established so we are seeing the difference in this school that earlier it analytical school considered it with science historical school considered it as something that develops over a period of time and philosophical school tries to find a reason behind the law coming to the point it isn't related to its recorded or scholarly substance the eminent law specialists of the school were grotius emmanuel kant and hegel these law specialists see law neither as a discretionary order of the ruler like in historical school nor concerning the making of recorded need to them the law is the result of human reason and its motivation is to hoist and praise human identity so we can see that this school is largely dependent on human reason coming to the propounders of this school number 1 is hegel Hegel was the most persuasive scholar of the historical school. His framework is a ne necrotic one. As per him, the state and the law both are developmental. He considered that the state develops over a period of time, and similarly, likewise, like state, the law too develops over a period of time, taking the help of the reason and the knowledge present in every individual. He further states. the extraordinary commitment of hegel to philosophical school is the improvement of the possibility of advancement as per him the different appearances of social life including law as the result of developmental unique procedure this procedure includes rationalistic structure uncovering itself in theory absolute opposite and blend the human soul sets a proposition which ends up present as the main thought of a specific recorded age so we can clearly see that there is a huge emphasis upon the concept of reason 
Coming to the second propounder is Kant. Kant, in his very famous book, Critique of Pure Reason, stated that the opportunity of man act as indicated by his will and the moral purposes are commonly correlated because no moral hypothesis is conceivable without man opportunity of self-assurance. Again, Kant emphasized upon the concept of reason. That's why he says that every law, anything is indicated by a will of an individual. Will is something, consciousness. Consciousness leads to consciousness. Consciousness comes from reason. Coming to the third point, Rousseau. Uh, according to the social contract theory that is very famous and given by Rousseau, it states that uh, it was the Rousseau's endeavor to envision the type of government that best avows the individual opportunity of every one of his natives with specific limitations natural to an intricate present day civil society. Coming to the very last school of sociological school, if we see that the sociological school of jurisprudence developed uh, as a blend of different juristic uh, contemplations, if we consider the previous schools uh, of jurisprudence, some of an analytical, it equated law with the science. Furthermore, down the line, it separated law with the other social science subjects such as polity, uh, history, uh, medicine, maths, and arithmetic. Secondly, the second school was the historical school. It highlighted that the law develops with the nation and dis disintegrates with the nation. So the importance of custom, usage, practices were very prevalent in uh, historical school. In 70, the main propounder of the historical in school emphasized hugely upon the following of customs and he denied the codification of law. He hugely, he strongly opposed the codification of law because he felt that law is something that develops with the nation. It continues to develop again and again with the time. Hence, you just cannot codify a law. Similarly, in the contemporary times we see in UK, we do not have a proper constitution. There are conventions, there are practices, there are unwritten laws, but they don't have constitution like India. So after revising what we have read till now, coming to the last school of jurisprudence, that is sociological school, the sociological school of jurisprudence developed as a blend of different jurist, uh, juristic contemplations. It is very simple that after all the schools, sociological school will somehow have all the characteristics of the previous school. Hence, this type of law, treat, uh, this type of school treat law as a social wonder. As indicated by them, the law is a social capacity, an outflow of human culture concerning the external relations of its individuals. Montesquieu, Auguste Comte, Herbert Spencer, Digit, Rus Pound are the prominent legal advisors of the school. Auguste Comte, he is known as the father of sociological school and he believed that society like any other organism can progress when it is guided by scientific principles. Hence, this theory is commonly called as scientific positivism. So we can see like society, equated with society, the law is similar. Like a society, it develops like an organism and is tied and it, and it have its span of life and then it is it comes to an end. The second one is Herbert Spencer. He distinguished between the divine laws and man-made laws and stated that the purpose of law is to resolve the matter of society. La, uh, second last, Digit. He propounded the doctrine of social solidarity, meaning interdependence of man is the essence of society and he denounced the omnipotence of state which has led to despotism and total, totalitarian rule. So this is cool and by the definition of Degate, we can relate it with the contemporary times. This is cool emphasized upon the society and Leon Degate explains that we are all dependent over each other. There is a concept of social solidarity. 
we are in we are in consonance with each other we live in an environment we are dependent upon each other and that is the essence of any society and just we cannot have any kind of authority that is a despot and who thinks about having a totalitarian rule in any nation the fourth one is rus uh, rusko pound rusko pound considered law as a social engineering its primary assignment being to quicken the procedure of social requesting by endeavoring every single imaginable exertion to maintain a strategic distance from in irreconcilable circumstances of people in the general public rusko pound gave a very brilliant theory that is being named as social engineering which simply means that as a society we need to do a certain level of engineering with time to time accumulating every individual that is having significance in any society in compar in comparison if we consider the nation like india we see the concept of social engineering that was propounded by shri jagjeevan ram the the man behind the ideology of the major parties in india he believe that every individual must be taken together if we need a society that is developing if we need a society that is progressive we need to include every individual along the progress journey hence in indian context the social engineering was taking the Uh, people of every cla class whether it is backward class women disabled physically challenged mental mentally challenged uh, children old age people and taking every individual together and leaving no one behind for the progress of the nation coming to the point along with these lines courts officials heads and legal scholars must work with the arrangement and try to keep up a harmony between the contending interest in the public eye so hence we are seeing it right that in any progressive society we need to take every individual together and along with these lines courts officials heads and legal scholars must work in arrangement they must help each other they must lead the crowd to to have a certain level of leadership and to guide them and to bring them at par with everyone and to improve the condition of the society as well as to make a nation progressive rusko pound specifies different benefits which the law should look to ensure and arrange them in a various general classes so the purpose of the law is to look the loopholes is to correct the mistakes that is prevalent in the society and arrange them into various general classes to stop the any biasness that is prevalent in the society and bring every individual equally with other individuals and maintain the principle of equity to coming to the conclusion we have seen all the schools of jurisprudence that are brilliantly framed by the very famous jurisprudence of their times we have seen jurisprudence uh, from the angle of india we have seen jurisprudence from the angle of uk we can we will further see the uh, jurisprudence in the respect of america and the other progressive nations and that's the beauty of jurisprudence jurisprudence is a very vast topic it it develops over a period of time laws develops over a period of time and that's why jurisprudence needs a very deep study connecting it with the contemporary times and the purpose of jurisprudence in, is to bring the best of the laws is to uh, make law that is best in itself that is self serving that makes any change in the society and the law that is suited best for the society so coming to the conclusion jurisprudence is the scientific study of law we have read it earlier it is a kind of science that investigates the creation application and requirement of law revising what we have read earlier in 
all the slides of this PPT, I would say that in analytical school, we equated law with the science. In historical school, we equated law with the nation, with the history of the nation, with the customs, with the usage, with the practices, and with the essence of the nation that the law develops with the society, law develops with the nation, and law disintegrates with the disintegration of the nation. Third, we took a philosophical school that emphasized upon the reason we all are human beings and as human beings we are having a certain level of consciousness and even if we do not have we are supposed to have a certain level of consciousness and consciousness simply means to dip, to distinguish between right and wrong what is justified and what is not justified there are many jurors that emphasized upon the jurisprudence that it is the study of right and wrong. Alpian has been a thinker who stated that jurisprudence is nothing but, but the study or the ability to distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. And that's consciousness. That, that's consciousness that must be there in every individual. Hence, sociological school emphasized, philosophical school emphasized upon the importance of reason, upon how the law is made from the will of every individual. If people want it, then the law comes to, comes in practice. And if it is negated by people, there is no significance of law. You just cannot have a law that is against the will of people. You just cannot have a law that is not accepted by its individuals. The subjects, meaning the citizens of any nation, must be ready to abide by that law. It must not be self-serving. It must not be opposing to the demand of the society. Last, we uh, uh, read about philosophy, uh, sociological school. Sociological school talked about how law develops with the society. As the society develops, the law develops. It is like an organ organism. With the development of any creature, the law develops, taking the loopholes, taking the any other areas, and then it is fully developed as a law. And then it, after a span of time, it comes to a no use. Similarly, if we see there are many legislation in India that holds no significance in current times. Hence, a very apt said by sociological school that law is like a creature, law is like an organism. Coming to the conclusion, I would say, jurisprudence is the investigation of theories and methods of insight in regard to the law. It has a viable and instructive esteem. Viable means, viable and instructive, it instructs, it instructs you to do something. It has a level of insight, a consciousness, a reason that, that motivates us to move further with consciousness. There are four schools of jurisprudence, although the schools of laws try to eradicate some of the shortcomings in the lawmaking and enacting procedures, there has to be an analysis and a study to report the claim of the purpose and rationale behind the law. Moreover, the enactment of law should be looked at from a practical approach rather than a theoretical approach. If we consider this scenario in India, we have one of the brilliant lawmakers that was uh, Sri Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. He is said to be one of the most pragmatic persons ever born in the history of India. He took the practical approach. The, the uniqueness of his character was that he took a practical approach to every problem. He had a very practical solution to every problem. And then he, he although he had PhDs in many subjects, he had multiple PhDs, he was not a theoretical person. He never believed in the isolation of law. He never believed in, in being stable. He took up cases, he took up grievances that were related to every part of the society to every individual. Hence, he developed a pragmatic approach. He developed a practical approach to every solution, to every problem. Hence, uh, if we see law should serve the same purpose. Law should be something like that, 
that it serves the society to its best even if it does not follow the theoretical approach theory is something that i present in books that cannot be practically utilized but practicality brings vastness in the individual we just we just can we just praise dr bhima ambedkar on the basis that he had a very pragmatic approach he he just did not rely on the theoretical basis and he continued to live his life as an example that how a pragmatic approach can bring a change in the society hence the enactment of law should be looked at from a practical approach rather a theoretical approach law is like an organ as we read law is like a creature so we just have to build something that is relatable to the society that is acceptable by the society and it just not relevant as per the books coming to the conclusion i would say that this uh, all these four schools of jurisprudence are complete in itself they hold the very significance of law of the basis of jurisprudence but as we have read that law is not something that is static law moves with the society law develops with the society law is very pragmatic we cannot vouch that in future we will not have further schools of jurisprudence it might happen we are able to develop further schools of jurisprudence with the coming of time with the emergence of various thinkers and i would i and every individual of the progressive society would like to have further schools being enacted in the study of jurisprudence by the end concluding my point i would say that this session has been compiled by me taking the reference of various books and research papers i hope people and the students in the legal fraternity will like this lecture and this lecture seems to be informative from everyone's angle from everyone's approach have a nice day thank you